CNBC TV 18 Weekender. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18 Weekender. My guest today is an ad man, a serial entrepreneur, a certified scuba diver and a passionate foodie all rolled into one. It's time to get up close and personal with much awarded ad filmmaker Pralad Kakkar. Having founded Genesis Film Productions in 1977, since then Prahlad has directed memorable ads for companies like PepsiCo, Unilever, Britannia and Nestle to name a few. But the man wears many hats. He's launched a scuba diving company and also an entrepreneurship school lately. Let's go meet him at his house in Bandra to know more. Hi, Hi. nice meeting you. Is this how you spend your weekend at home? No, my dear. I'm just, uh, uh, this is pre-breakfast. And what's with the attire? I spent 15 years in Lakshadweep. Alright. And I took to the Mund, as it's called, in yeah. Kerala. Because it's the most sensible thing to wear in the weather. Alright, justified. Prahlad, you know, you've ruled the advertising world with your brand of irreverent humor and award-winning commercials uh, for India's top corporates and agencies. What is your success mantra? If you don't enjoy what you do, you cannot infect an audience with the same level of enjoyment. So when you read a script and you close your eyes and you see the film in your head, how much do you enjoy it? How much do you do it for money? Sure. And how much do you do it for pleasure? Ninety percent of the time I do it for pleasure and I'm right. Yeah. Ten percent of the time I do it for money because I get greedy. And I'm always wrong. Which is your favorite advertisement and which one you hope you really never made? When I look at everybody else's ads today, yeah. the really good ones, yeah. the biggest compliment I can pay them is, I wish I'd made this ad. And you which know? one was that? Uh, can you like, name one? Like the Google ad, ad with the, where, the, where the girl gets her Hello. uncle and his friend from Pakistan together. You yeah. know? I mean, like the ad with, with uh, Janagana Mana, where the deaf and dumb children are uh, singing Janagana Mana with, with sign language. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it really moves you, it inspires you. So, you know, ads uh, which add a lot of value, which go way beyond the brief, which don't just follow the script or don't contribute anything, especially with directors and producers, they, shelf life is six months. Ads that go beyond the brief, and the director puts his heart and soul and passion into it, yeah. it lives forever because it adds a value which isn't 4. 2 and 2 does not equal to 4. 2 and 2 equals to 22. The day 2 and 2 equals to 22, it's a value that you added forever. You've told us about the ads that you liked. Uh, what about the one ad that went wrong perhaps? Or oh Lord, did not, not okay. one. Hello. I've gone through convenient ambition. <laughs> I, I repeat like a mantra that this is not my ad about 500 times and I look at it and I say it's not bad. So anything that goes wrong it. is not my ad, I've never done no, it. No, you know what happens is when you make a really bad ad because you've done it for money and you look at it, every time you think that you see it, it'll become less, you know, pervasive, it'll become less embarrassing. Yeah. It's absolutely wrong. It becomes worse and worse with every viewing. With every viewing, you become excruciating. So I now I'm in complete deniability. Is that your mere idea? <laughs> All right. So what, <laughs> according to you, makes a 30-second commercial tick? When it touches you and changes you. Yeah. Indelibly, in that instant. What has been challenging about the ad film industry? You know what? What has kept me going till now, hmm. and it will probably keep me going till till I breathe the last. Yeah. About the ad film industry, one is that every single project is different from the last one. Yeah. It has its own intrinsic challenges, creative ones. So my school, which is the Shambhendika School of uh, Filmmaking, is that what difference can you make to a script? You know, you're not doing a job, you're owning the job. And that's what makes it interesting for me because every single film then becomes a challenge. Problem with advertising is that there are lots of very mediocre people with very big egos hmm. who actually think that they're better than they are. And that is a, the biggest impediment for good 
film directors and producers to actually add value to what they do. Your Pralad Kakkar. So if you say something, people will take it seriously. But for a budding... No, but I wasn't always Pralad Kakkar. I had to start from somewhere. Yeah. Were you like this from the very beginning? I was worse in the beginning now than I am now. I have mellowed down now. I tend to listen to other people as well. But when I was uh, younger, I said, uh, uh, no, I'll do it two ways. I'll do it your way and I'll do it my way. And okay. Then, and then... If you take my way, you pay for it. What I used to do is I spend money out of my own pocket, shoot everything twice, my way and their way, if I did, disagreed intensely. Sure. Okay. And I always did two things. I was known for that. And I was known uh, not in a nice way. People said that this guy is going to toko what we told him to do <laughs> and shoot his own film with our money. And not listen to us. So, how many times did it happen that the clients actually took your film and not the one uh, which they had? 90% of the time. What are the skills or qualities that are needed to make it big in this advertising industry? Passion. Vision. What the kids today don't understand is that filmmaking, regardless of whether it's features of ads, has its own grammar, its own language, its own syntax. Yeah. If they don't learn the language, then they're lost because they're li limited to what they can copy. In April this year, you know, the Parliament Committee came up with this report that suggested, uh, you know, penalizing brand ambassadors for products that don't deliver, and you know, they could uh, they could end up in a jail term with uh, which is for five years or a fine that up to 50 lakh rupees. Uh, your thoughts, because you know, if if the centre accepts these changes, I want to make a film on political promises during campaigns, which are not delivered. Do we find them 50 lakhs, parliamentarians? who, when they go on their uh, political campaigns, promise the earth yeah. and more. Yeah. Okay? And it's on record because they're actually speaking it. Sure. So all you have to do is videotape it and turn around and, and five years later turn around and say, I'm finding you 50 lakhs for not performing according to your promise True. and not delivering what you promised. Yeah. How can they do that? You know, it will open a can of worms for them. They don't realize that they're the first breakers of promises as parliamentarians. And that legally, it's untenable. Yeah. That you have licensed a product to be made. You have put inspectors to make sure that the product delivers what it has promised. And then you are trying to penalize some poor chap who's been paid to add his name to that product to be able to sell it. When you yourself, who are supposed to actually monitor the, 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 the validity of the product, are scot free and you're making laws against these guys. Yeah. On what basis are you doing that? You've often said in many interviews that you're not an entrepreneur and you've, you know, turned around your hobbies into businesses and scuba diving is one such example. When I started my scuba diving business, yeah. everybody told me it's going to fail. Everybody, from the bank upwards. Well, Pralat, hold that thought. We'll, we'll talk about your scuba diving experience at your scuba diving office in uh, Bandra. On that note, stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 Weekender. We are in conversation with our Guru Pralat Kakkar. We'll be right back. CNBC TV 18 Weekender.